Three minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific Time. And, of course, that's the time zone we go to right now. It is uh, in the 206 where our Renaissance man resides. He, of course, is uh, not with a cape, but with uh, sunglasses and an outfit that uh, reminds everybody of the shadow. Uh, He is Mark Taylor Canfield. He is uh, in Seattle in the 206, uh, and he comes to us with, uh, I believe, guitar in hand. Here it is, live and in color. Take it away, MTC. Let me tell you a story about a man named Trump. He wants to be a dictator, but he's just a stupid punk. His whole crime family is corrupt as it can be. Someone ought to lock him up and throw away the key. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Amen. Jed Clampett, eat your heart out. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, I wanted to tell you, we have rain in Seattle. Thank you, God. Wow. Uh, we, are, we are back to hopefully putting out these forest fires because we've all, you know, my voice is kind of scratchy. I did a show uh, this week, a great show at Nectar with an amazing, enthusiastic crowd. And, and one of my favorite bands, the Marshall Law Band. I love that name, right? Yes. They perform. Yes, yes, great, great name. Oh, and also, wait, I'll show you. And um... <laughs> this is uh, a Spook Arena. It, it, it's a, Halloween. It's it a scary. Up. With the red hair, yes. Is yeah, that supposed to be Trump? Yeah, I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Uh, we performed together okay. on uh, on Monday night, and she just wanted to say hi ah. to Jeff. Hi, okay. Jeff. How you doing? Does this person and have a name? Uh, Spook Arena. So Spook Arena, Spook is, Arena. A, is a marionette. So when I was on stage, uh-huh. she was kind of dancing around with us because she likes to headbang and stuff. So, you know, anyway, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to introduce her to She's her. She's a punk so rocker. Halloween. I know uh, in... At the Evergreen State College, where I went to college, we celebrated Halloween all month. So I don't know if other people do that. But yes, we have rain, um, which means that it's not great kayaking weather. I've had some great trips around the Bainbridge Island and the San Juan Islands over the last few weeks because you want to talk about global warming. It was 80 degrees here a week ago, Jeff. And that's totally crazy. We're just talking to our friends in Wisconsin. It's too warm there to wear uh, Navy for our good friend Harvey Kay. You have to wear uh, a yeah. neutral color called oatmeal. Whatever <laughs> that is, it's sort of. If a you come to around. Seattle with all the with wow. all the smoke that's been in the air, and you come to Seattle and you yeah. start um, trying to be a climate change denier, you're going to get a major pushback because global warming is Dude. here, folks. It's really affected us here in the northwest. Well, we should and, be talking about that, man. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And 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 any 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 idiot who doesn't believe it's there, just have them go look at the hurricanes in Florida or what has happened you know, in other parts of the South uh, recently. This is, you know, it's just ridiculous. Hey, I, I, wanna, I wanted to tell you, I love that guitar, by the way. Um, the, the thing that I am just, you know, so annoyed with is the, um, is the looking at candidates um, who should be winning in a blowout. And I understand that Patty Murray has a race. I was li- listening to some folks on C-SPAN this morning and they're saying that, you know, she's still probably going to win, but it went from strong, uh, you know, win for Patty Murray to likely because you get a right winger, you know, throw in a whole bunch of money, a lot of it dark money at, at the uh, formerly the woman known as the woman in sneakers or whatever the heck their, that term was and uh, our tennis shoes. Soccer mom and, and tennis shoes. It was the year mom of the and tennis woman shoes. when she uh, she, right, it was the year right, the yeah. when she was elected. Right. Yeah, and it was the soccer mom in tennis shoes. That's the image that she represented back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that was, right. uh, I think, the Carol Mosey Braun, I think, was there. It was uh, a handful of people. Uh, I think Mari may be the only one left. Uh, there might have been somebody in, in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure. But anyways, there there's a whole bunch. But this dark money issue is is, you know, front and center. And it is, uh, I know it's something that uh, you've been following along, and, and um, our old friend used to be on the show quite a bit, Ryan Grimm, and now does his own show. Um, you know, I've uh, been talking about it. Uh, and Elizabeth Warren was in town, um, our friend here from Massachusetts, the uh, presidential candidate, and of course, uh, senior senator from the Commonwealth, uh, helping her get out the vote. Again, you know, it's, it's, 
it's not great that she has to call in the stars to do that. But, you know, um, you know, she needs to also become more progressive. Look, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the Democratic candidates have kind of, you know, fallen asleep. Uh, and, you know, Republicans throw a whole bunch of dark money at it, a whole bunch of money. And all of a sudden they're in the race because, you know, unlike Sawant and unlike Jayapal, you know, they're they're not, you know, fully connected to the communities, you know, and that's that's the problem. You know, sometimes, you know, it may be maybe time in the case for Mari, who's been there since, what, 92, 94, you know, maybe time for her to uh, to move into uh, a different part of her her life. And, you know, I mean, it's a long time. And therefore, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, uh, be 30 years, you know, in 2024. Uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, you know, we're, we're dealing with a, a situation here that, um, uh, you know, we need to have the fresh blood. And I, I actually think that Jayapal would be a fantastic senator. I think Salon would too. So, you know, you have, you have a lot of good choices there. Uh, so talk to me because, you know, all this stuff goes right into your world of music, uh, and Ticketmaster. And of course our great friends, Eddie Veteran and Pearl Jam did a lot on that over the last decade or two. Um, you know, it, it all kind of goes in. It's just corporations grabbing everything, you know, raising prices and they don't have to, you know, this, like the whole inflation thing, you don't have to, I mean, in some cases, yeah, they get situations with mid Eastern oil, but the there's a lot of oil. Amer you know, America has oil reserves and, you know, Biden just opened the spigot. So, you know, they don't, they don't have to be charging $4 a, a gallon for gas. They don't have to be doing all these other things for groceries and so forth. And again, we have monopolies in the grocery stores. I mean, you know, Safeway, I don't know if you have it there, but Safeway owns Stop and Shop, which is now in DC and in uh, Boston, New York. I mean, you know, th this is, this is where you are. And it was, I think started in San Francisco. Well, you know, I, I don't mean to make light of it, but they raised the beer prices here. So that really pisses me <laughs> off. Jeff. Yeah. They're hitting me where it hurts. Yeah, when I go to it is. IPA, it's like $15. Well, you go to a lot of breweries, right? You go, you go to the, uh, uh, you know, to the places Brew where pubs. you can get a good brew. Yeah. Yeah, there are actually brew pubs in Seattle. There's one actually at Magnuson Park, named after our former Senator Warren Magnuson, that uh, mm -hmm. is a brew pub. It's called the Magnuson Brew Pub. And you can only get their beer there at that one particular pub because you can That's see great. they have the cask right there where they're brewing it. And so that it's not available. No, you know, it's not available in any stores, no CUDs, you know, order before midnight tonight. It's like, you can't get it anywhere except there. So <laughs> we are lucky in that regard. and. You know, I have noticed that bars have raised their prices, but this happened before this recent uh, wave of, of inflation, but the prices did go up at the bars. I think people are okay with that because they realize how little uh, the the service uh, industry workers make and how hard it is to survive yeah, here. So yeah. they pretty much, it, it's a pretty much a, a, a good uh, bet. If you like your service in Seattle, you're gonna give them a, 20 25 percent tip because they that's kind of normal here but you also have beer now where you know for a pint of ipa you're charged eight nine dollars so hard to be an alcoholic i guess because you know where do you get your cheap beer but <laughs> yeah you don't want you don't want to do that uh look i mean like, i i love a pale ale and you know if, if you have to pay that you know i don't i don't drink that much anyway so for me yeah. it's and you don't need uh, many you know, because a beer they, or two and yeah yeah, compared to like a Budweiser, a 5% beer or something, the the uh, IPAs and the Pale Ales, they, you know, go up to 7 8% sometimes. So, yeah, one beer and you're set. Although I have to admit, you know, Juliana uh, had a birthday party last night, and I'm feeling a little bit like maybe I had one too many, but not too bad. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, you can Juliana is the, the uh, significant other of our great friend MTC. Uh... If not the one of the top, uh, challenges to democracy at this moment because I, I just wrote an article and submitted it. To, you know, I'm shopping it around, so I'll let you know when it gets published. But it talks a lot about uh, the undermining of democracy in the United States just with being with money, just people getting outspent. So, what, one of the lines from that article is, you know, unfortunately, I think truth and democracy is being outspent by lies and fascism at this point, unfortunately. So, yeah, uh, we have that well, issue. You know, we just, um, 
and democracy doesn't really sell very well at, at the moment, unfortunately. But well, I that, don't think no, money, I don't think a lot of people understand the definition. You know, this is this is the problem. You almost yeah. have to break it down to the point. You know, we you know we had on Stack, Stan Greenberg yesterday. You know, the great pollster, Clinton pollster, and 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 now at Democracy Core. You know, and what you have, Mark, is you know a lot of people, particularly over the last forty years, we where you end up uh, getting rid of of civics classes, and you know, so there's all of this sort of anti anti education. If you remember the previous president, we're not going to mention his name. Says, "Oh, I love the uneducated." You know, I mean, who would say such a thing? But th that's what well, they want. That's how you, you take advantage yeah. of people, you know, because they don't know the information. You know, my 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 great friend, late Ed Shields, would say, "Low information voters." Well, that's where you get a ton yeah. of people out there that still believe that you know the previous president won the uh, uh, won the election in twenty twenty. I mean, oh, it's just yeah. you know these people are are just completely that's you know Tiffany mindless. Smiley. The woman, the Republican that's running against Patty Murray for senator of Washington yes. State, thinks. Donald Trump won the election and that it was stolen from yeah. him. So yeah. on the lines well, look what's from, happened in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. A name Gary for Lee. a candidate, especially Tiffany Smiley. I mean, it doesn't fit her demeanor at all because she <laughs> has, look in her latest debate with uh, her latest uh, public speaking engagement. She attacked the Seahawks. She attacked uh, the wow. city of Seattle uh, as being uh, woke institutions that she's making fun of because they wouldn't let they love uh, that word, don't they? Elbows in her campaign act. So she's like Trump. She they just don't, they, you know, if you ask them the definition of woke, they won't know what it is. They're going to say, "Oh well, it's it's open, it's uh, they're 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 progressive liberal uh, wacky ideas about uh, about African Americans." That's what they'll say. Because here's the thing: I think in, my, in the other line in my article is that um, basically, uh, if you can convince people that the last election was stolen and you can blame immigrants for the loss of all your jobs, right, everything. you know, right. and you can scare people into thinking they're going to lose their jobs. To immigrants. Then unfortunately in the United States, you have now conducted a very effective campaign and a successful campaign. And that's so sad, Jeff, to realize that, that that's what that's it true. takes for people to win. It's just manipulating people. Demagogues throughout history have done it. The Republicans are excellent right. at doing this. They throw money yes. at candidates like Patty Murray, where you know she should be it's getting. It's Joe McCarthy on steroids. You know, it's 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 all the stuff that from dictatorships on 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 band, Mussolini in, incorporated and all that. Um, you know, I don't know. Hey, uh, congratulations to the Mariners, and um, you know that is uh, a fantastic season. And you know, I wanna I wanna approach this because of what we're talking about here. I don't know if you had a chance to watch last weekend, the Padres and Dodgers were playing and they were playing and, and Larry Cohen confirmed this with the Phillies uh, Braves too. They're playing ads on the Fox network um, that basically, I'm not sure if this was on, on TBS or not uh, different political agendas. And um, but anyways, it was, it was basically, you know, 30 or 60 seconds of just a lot of lies of of people it's just probably the same stock footage they used in 2018 and 2020 they're coming to the border they're coming to the border you know it's it's you know it, it's sort of like sweeps weeks and you know in television up oh, it's november it's october that means with time to get the time to get the footage out blame it on brown people yeah if you can't win on the issues then you just have to scare people i guess that's the only thing right, they have exactly. left in there they're back and they're kind of one trick ponies because they're always doing this kind of thing. It's been done in elections in the past where the, the crime issue, well, it's usually economics and crime is kind of where they're at. And then to rally their own, uh, well, yeah, it, but they blame it, on, they like, blame it on Biden. You know, I mean, you know, we, we were just playing, I don't know if we have it, Josh, uh, the uh, soundbite from, uh, from big net, uh, the, uh, Republican running that Pennsylvania race, which is the Scranton race, Mark. Um, but you know, I mean, everything is, you know, a uh, Biden crime, Biden immigration, you know, I mean, it's just, they, 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 they you know, it's Apparently he's the most and, terrible and, man in history, Jeff. I, I, I yes, didn't realize exactly. this. 
I've been critical of him, of course, but I had no idea that he was worse than Hitler. So I'm just shocked to find that out. But but really, let's let's be specific with people so they get some education here. Dark money. And one place to find this is at OpenSecrets.org. It's right on the top of their right. website. Right there. Dark money is is oftentimes it comes from politically active nonprofits who fi- who have 501c4 status, not like right. Democracy Watch News. Not the C3, but the C4. We, we are not allowed to get into electoral politics, but a 501 50- 501 a C4 can, and that's this post Citizens United, if everybody remembers that yeah. world that we're living in, where they're under basically no legal obligation to disclose their donors, even if they spend to influence elections. So uh, they choose not to reveal their sources. Uh, then you have the shell companies, you know, and not and opaque nonprofits is what Open Secrets calls them, give these unlimited amounts of money to super PACs. So while the super PACs are legally required to disclose their donors, some of these groups are effectively dark money outlets when most of their funding can't be traced back to the original donors. So they can report that they're spending the money, but they can't tell you where it came from. So this is like uh, money laundering, Jeff. It's like what you do with uh, corrupt uh, mafia money or drug dealing money. You you hide it. You you put it in the system and you hope that no one can trace it back to where it actually came from. So you you buy a business oh, yeah. or you know, it's a shell game. It. You know, it's it's that shell game. Yeah. You're moving around, moving around. It. Oh, it's not here. It's not there. So we're innocent, you know. Meanwhile, the meantime, they're using that money to under the couch. they're buying candidates. They're literally like going to the political uh, campaign store and buying the candidate. Well, how much is this one? How much is that? I'll get two of those right. and three of these. Oh, you know, it's just like Trump finding votes. I want. You know, he's, mansion. he's looking for uh, puzzle yeah. pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a, it's like a bad dream, and I, and, and I'm hoping I'm going to wake up soon and I realize that wow, the country's back to some kind of normality and people are talking reasonable again. But unfortunately, if people you know, Harvey K was tweeting today and great to see him on your show again. He was tweeting that he thinks it's going to be DeSantis as a nominee for the, the at least the, the leading. Well, I mean, if, if the Democrats have any cojones, they should get Trump and they should at the very least, if they can't indict him and and put him in jail, they should at the very least say you can't run again. You were for a coup d'etat. We don't allow people who were organizing coup d'etat, no matter what role you had to run for president. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You know, so should and throw away the key. Obstruction, that is. Corruption. Fascism. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, this all has to be said, Jeff, because unfortunately the corporate media isn't doing a good job of talking about it. And people who do talk about it are immediately uh, thrown in with the the leftist camp, you know, and oh, you're with AOC and Omar and those crazy people. Right. Oh, we're we're all the all the all the all the the leftist and we're 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 so, so crazy. Meanwhile, all of the policies that I talk about, particularly the economic policies, 70 percent of the American people want it. Look, what Greenberg was saying uh, is that you get six hundred dollars a month child tax credit and we're going to pay for it by raising the taxes of the corporations or the one percent. Uh, however you do it, they're all one and the same. And, uh, you know, you can you can find good lawyers to, to, you know, give you a Cayman Islands account and do whatever. But that's what you do. And, you know, the fact is, is that um, we got it. We got to keep saying it. And that's that is the Democratic Party. It's not it's not some, you know, tie dye from the 1960s where you can fit four or five of them into a phone booth. We're a massive you group. Know. And, you know, yeah, that's why I think it's great that we're, we're expanding it. Jayapal was a big part of this. We brought together that whole coalition. Yeah, it was brought down by the Gottsheimers who got to Pelosi and everybody else, and they couldn't do it, and Build Back Better went down. But a lot of it got into the IRA, and, you know, that's that's a good thing. So I'm going to go and see Elizabeth Warren's um, stump speech or whatever, uh, fundraising speech or whatever here at Seattle Center in, in, right after the show. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, other local elected leaders. I know Governor Inslee will be there. I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. if um, Representative Jayapal is there, you know, who's a friend of mine. And I think it's wonderful to live in a part of the country. I know we have a lot to criticize as, as far as these Amazon corporate takeovers here, but yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you, you have represented. You've like got that Starbucks and, and you've got a little bit of Microsoft. And although, you know, at least we the Microsoft have these people a little bit on speak for. But we also have some people who speak for the working class. And I think it's nice to live in a part of the country where you can actually stand up there and feel good about the people who got elected rather than all these crazies that are getting elected across the country. And one indication of how good the manipulation game is working is that if you look at the polls, people do support things 
you know, like addressing climate change and uh, all, all sorts of other issues like the child tax credit. But if you, there are two different kinds of polls. There's the polls that show what the opinion of the people are. And then there, there's the polls who shows who they're going to vote for. And unfortunately, yep. they don't match because their beliefs. Yeah, and well, they, a lot of that, though, and we, we plain sound earlier from Cartwright, too many Democrats are afraid to tackle and go after the, the Republicans and, and the lies. And, and, you know, we were talking with Harvey Kay and before that, Professor Shelton, uh, you know, also from the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. And you got to you got to state the facts, you know, but there's yeah. too many consultants in D.C. Oh, you can't say this. You know, you're looking you're going to look uh, very wild and so forth. People want you know, to see if you're on their side. They have your back and you make it clear. You know, you, you can you criticize and then you come up with a plan. That's, that's how you do it. Yeah. And then you can mock these folks. Is that all you got? Is that who you are? You're blaming brown people? People are leaving their country and, they're, and they have no economic benefits whatsoever because you're dictators there. So they, they, they want to, for fun, go and risk their lives to go across the Rio Grande? You know, call well, them on that. Yeah. Because then we're going to say, oh, well. I, yeah. A lot of it is just the, a lot of people are mean-spirited when they spout stuff like that. They they yeah. really don't have the best best interests of everybody in mind. And, you know, what, but here's another indication. So if now we have Democrats in the White House and in the Congress, but if we had a truly progressive administration, they would certainly be going after Ticketmaster for this huge antitrust, right. you know. Cause By the way, is Eddie Vedder getting, getting back in, involved in this? Is any word from him? Yeah, I was just saying that Bruce, you know, there's a big pushback from the music musicians because of Live Nation's consolidation with the Ticketmaster and how they've just completely monopolized the entire music industry. So there really has to be some kind of antitrust case uh, against Ticketmaster. They should not be allowed. Bruce the was around, he would break them up. Hey, Mark, check him out on YouTube. Have yourself a great weekend, my friend. Great to see you. That's a great song, too. And, Thanks, uh, Jeff. Have a great day. Buddy, you have to eat your heart Best out. You uh, thank you, man. Hey, I want to thank uh, Josh and uh, Freddie and the gang today for their great work producing this broadcast. Way to go, guys. Thank you for all your great work. Have a good weekend, folks. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, keep on fighting peacefully. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it's my time to say I got to go.